Hello, I'm Cheryl Peralt, host of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. This program of poetry, music, and spoken word is recorded before a live television audience here in HCAM Studios. Often the number of artists who come to share in this venue are too many for our regular program, which has to be edited for time. Because there is such an array of talent in our monthly open mic, we have put together this special presentation of additional open mic performances. I hope you enjoy it. This is my first time here, and uh, I had two poems selected, and then when I uh, had seen what the theme was for today, I uh, changed my mind and, and picked uh, two different ones to go along with the theme of the light and the darkness. And my first poem is called Shadows. Does the shadow only know when darkness covers, where do shadows go waiting to be rediscovered? How to bring the shadow out with the light. Please have no doubt, the time must be right. As a child, we play with them, shine a flashlight at the wall, make a twist with your hand, then appears some animal. 
They make you smile, shadow has come to play. Then after a while, they go away. As a young adult, you walk home. The light of the afternoon sun brings out a shadow, it's very long. You and shadows are far from done. Now you're older, wiser too. Shadow does not show to you what it is that's really true. Under layers, what to view. Of your shadow deep inside, can you face it, should you hide? Look for shadow, go and sit. With the darkness coming from the depths of your being, begin to accept. All who you are, dark and light, go down as far as you might. From your shadow, embrace the knowing, the you may go on with growing. Without darkness, light cannot shine. Find in both a balance. Feel your rhythm and the rhyme. Watch it dance as you move. See your shadow to be revealed. With much practice, you will improve. From within, no light concealed. Every day and every hour, please be sure not to neglect. Feel the love, feel the power. For the shadow, pay respect. And my next poem is called The Shift. We are on the verge of much more than we are. Look up and observe the wondrous fallen star. Wonder why it fell from such a high place. A story to tell, filled with God's own grace. Tell all that you see within every day. This is meant to be. We are here to stay. Hear the birds sing out their song from above. Reverse all the doubt to fill this world with love. Send love from your heart as far as it may go. The veil will depart, a knowing starts to grow. Between all the spaces, high above and below, showing the faces, no seeds left to sow. Planting those seeds deep in our being, watching our deeds, the soul will start seeing. Our world never will unfold to the new story. All listeners be told, seek out God's glory. A light will shine through the darkness now beaming. No more need to prove as love's light is streaming. Filling the void left by mankind, old patterns destroyed, our souls will then find. Its truth from within brings light without question. Love's magic to begin, no conditions, no exceptions. Surrender all fears, step into the light. See through all your tears, your eyes gifted with sight. Now look in this moment, your vision now clear. Attuned to atonement, new vibrations are here. To help you rise up above all the dreams, the mind has made up, illusion now seems. A distant memory before, love's awakening came. To show us the door, never again the same. Our bodies now lighter, our souls now free. Mother Earth now brighter as it was meant to be. Thank you. We all love monkeys and chimps, whose antics give us fits. But I enjoy the vervet monkeys who live on the Isle of St. Kitts. These Caribbean monkeys have a human trait like us all, because these little monkeys like to drink their alcohol. <laughs> The vervets hang out near bars and finish the cocktails people leave behind. While most are social drinkers, 5% drink themselves blind. The social drinkers imbibe in moderation, and they drink with other monkeys in a bunch. They like their booze diluted with fruit juice, and they never, never drink before lunch. The serious binge drinkers down as much liquor as they can. They get rowdy, start fights, pass out, and next day, they do it over again. Thank you very much. And this one is called, uh, What Do You Say? What do you say when the parents coo? Oh, isn't she the prettiest baby in the world? You look in the bassinet only to see a cross between Eleanor Roosevelt, Abe Lincoln, and Rin Tin Tin, with the worst of all three, 
A triple fat baby head, eyes crossed, a mouth like a pothole, fingers carved out of dried apples, legs like chewed up pencils, toes like rotted cherries, breasts sweet as rotten eggs. I gulp, look at the parents and say, Gagar, she, she, she's the most beautiful baby in the whole world. And by the way, Cheryl, you look terrific this morning. <laughs>
unencumbered to face the dawn as I am. Here is sand, there is water, solid land, liquid sea, and the sky is next to nothing, and next to nothing is next to me. Thank you. Standing here on this earth, for Cheryl Perot, and I'm not quite sure why I dedicated this to you, Cheryl, but for some reason, um, I think you inspired it. But it's called Standing Here on This Earth. Mornings when I awaken and stare through the window above my computer at the tree, her hardened buds turning burgundy, I am alive to some mythic energy. Before dark, I peer out at her again, pick and peck for news. How does it happen? How will you convert from skeletal bear to corpulent bloom? My curiosity is not uncaring, but feeling assailed by my eyes, she remains on guard, silent, bare, withdrawn. She'll not give away her secret. Then one night in April, upon arriving home, I close the car door, look up at my tree, and there, solid buds transformed, swellings of ruffled foliage. That night while I sleep, my tree has dispatched her novel intelligence without telling me. I awaken to observe a landscape of red-winged growth. In the yard, the wood, along the street, and over the hills, a whispering campaign. Every tree has heard the news. Every branch is frilled with heads like clover that nod and banter into fields of air, while I, I am still standing here on this earth. And this is called the spring thing. Don't show me squirrels' nests like weathered skulls nailed to branches holding fecundity. Don't show me battalions of crows buried in gold that once perched on the scrawny shoulders of trees. I'm unnerved enough my keys lost under the passenger seat, driver's license out of date, passport living another life. Every year you exterminate the damage without complaint. Every year you authorize the crocus to unwrap herself at night. For what? To mock me? I'm still surprised when dandelions blink and Earth's lashes open for one more confrontation. Under the umbrella cloud of pollen flourish and insect glisten, your involuntary coalition. After the siege, must I inspect the virgin, the dead, the injured, and renew my faith in the living, in the buried seed, sign your name, Faithless. Thank you. This next poem, I went to a um, panel discussion last night in Petersham at the University of the Wild. It was a group of poor people who um, spoke of preserving the cultural landscape, kind of the natural landscape. Um, of the earth, and this poem is uh, dedicated to them. Under the land, the rocks do grind and crush and move and swivel. Turtle Island moves so slowly, creeping, creeping across, and Mothman skirts the magnetic anomalies. The world as we know it is a fraction of what the universe has to share. Like our brains only using a small portion, so too our world is revealing itself at low speed. Eyes of the heart are needed to see beyond the plain view. 
Every tree is alive with spirit. Every rock has a story to tell. Every part of the universe is crawling with energy, calling us to wake up and take it all in. There are certain places where the underworld meets with the sky, places of great Manitou, places between the worlds, places of great magic, all words to say other dimensions are allowed. Let us go to these places and sit and be present. Let us just sit and listen and be. It is enough our running the world ragged these last millennium. It is enough that our resources are spent, our people are tired, and our children are confused. It is with humility we come before the universe and ask, what can we do now to be in a better place? How can we be in better balance with the unseen? Can we tune in to the crushing energies underneath us in time to hear of their warning? Thank you. So this song is, um, I think, all the years combined of me coming out on the folk scene and all the great musicians, some in this room that I've met and have been part of my quilt. And um, I just realized that subconsciously this, that the subject of this song was probably inspired by this amazing poem that Cheryl wrote that I'm still trying to put music to. And lastly, this song, I think, is about morality and where one would stand um, needing to make a decision. This goes out to everybody who is not given a voice. This is called Rainbow Gasoline. <clears throat> this is all going to be experimental because I usually don't play with a slide. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> you guys hear that all right? In a moment of fear, I ran to my car and drove out of town. You see, I shot a man and left him bleeding on the ground. Blood on my hands. And blood all over my clothes mm. Life ebbed from his body And washed upon the floor Tame my hair Tried catching my breath I knuckle the steering wheel, my heart, heart press against my chest. I checked a rearview mirror for the strobe of blue lights. I left the city behind. Ominous and bright I kept playing the moment All in my head in slow motion The echo of the shot An incessant vision fine line between necessity and revenge vengeance but the rage in my blood clouded the difference and as I stood over him with my gun And I wondered 
coming before me I've been silenced in shame I pulled the trigger and asked God to be forgiven Some kind of monster we've become. You on your side and me on mine. My mother used to enjoy watching a raccoon in her trash can. It would raise its head with the lid on it with a look that said, catch me if you can. Of course, raccoons are fearless, and they're certainly not afraid of you. Since nearly half their body mass is fat, they won't feel what you do to them, too. Raccoons are gluttons who eat anything. These fressers will scarf down crayfish, apples, mice, eggs, frogs, turtles, whole snakes, and clams, with or without a serving of rice. The hugest raccoon on record was Bandit, who lived near Ice Cream World in Walnutport, PA. He loved peanut butter and blueberry slush puppies, and of course, anything else that came his way. So, the next time you go on a diet, don't compare yourself with a pig. Just say you've been eating like a raccoon, because those chow hounds are really big. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning. I'm here to share with you my humorous investigations into three modern myths. Uh, the first of which is the myth of happy birthday. Are these myths based on fact? Or are they based on fiction? Will we ever know? <laughs> happy birthday. The song was written in the 1890s by Mildred Hill and her sister, who was a school teacher. And 40 years later, the words were put to it. Now, to get to the myth and get right to the core, all you have to realize is that we all have only one birthday. That is the actual day of our birth. <laughs> and all the other annual rituals are, however important, but mere celebrations. And I don't know about you, but on the day of my birth, I was swimming blissfully around in my mother's womb. Free food. <laughs> free rent free hot tub, only suddenly to be thrust out into the freezing cold, some goon slapping me on the back, me coughing away all the fluids out. Now, I can think of a lot of adjectives to describe this, but folks, happy is not one of them. <laughs> now, 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 I know what you all must be thinking. Gee, that guy's really on the ball. You've really got to... Wake up pretty early in the morning to slip one past him. <laughs> Moving on to our next myth. This myth originated in the latter stages of the countercultural revolution in the 1970s, of which I was proudly a part. <laughs> this has to do with the myth of the peach pit, and it was alleged that if one ate the middle of a peach pit, it would be just like taking a hit of mescaline, only the results would linger on indefinitely. <laughs> well, that's ridiculous. I mean, I ate the middle of a peach pit, and look at me. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Now I know what you all must be thinking. Like, maybe you don't have to wake up that early in the morning to put one past me. But anyways, moving on to our next myth. <laughs> this is the myth, common myth that Putting a bag over one's head will cure one from the hiccups. Now, this myth originated somewhere in the 1850s, 1860s, as the modern paper bag, as we've all come to know it, was invented in 1852 and patented that year by a Francis Wall. Now, for the first time in recorded history, in front of a live television audience, you are about to witness the definitive proof as to whether or not Putting a paper bag on one's head will cure one of the hiccups. The drum roll, please. <laughs> the bag. Now, as you can all clearly see, I am wearing a bag over my head. And it would thusly appear that the hiccups have gone. <laughs> now, before you all break out into a roaring applause, there are a couple of subtle considerations. Hiccups could have been a momentary aberration, which may have ceased on their own, or their cessation may have been something temporary, and they may resume at any moment. So it just occurred to me that putting a paper bag on one's head by itself is not sufficient to prove whether putting a paper bag on one's head will cure the hiccups. Which leads me to the obvious question, why am I wearing a paper bag on my head in front of a television audience in the first place? This is not a good situation. There will be no applause necessary. Your empathy and compassion is welcome at this time. <laughs> Thank you. This first one's really short. I could not not read this poem today. Equinox. My morning commute needs heat while the afternoon back begs for AC. 12 hours of light and 12 hours of dark pushing back summer and greeting winter, pushing back winter and greeting summer. Equinoxes split the solstices right in half with a balancing act of light and dark and hot and cold. It is a fleeting time of equality when the dark and light meet fairly and squarely. Otherwise, it is an all-out fight about the light. Otherwise, we deal with extremes. It is too hot or too cold. It is too dark or too light. But at Equinox, it is all just right. <clears throat> this next poem, I went to a um, panel discussion last night in Petersham at the University of the Wild. It was a group of poor people who um, spoke of preserving the cultural landscape, kind of the natural landscape um, of the earth, and this poem is uh, dedicated to them. Under the land, the rocks do grind and crush and move and swivel. Turtle Island moves so slowly, creeping, creeping across, and Mothman skirts the magnetic anomalies. The world as we know it is a fraction of what the universe has to share. Like our brains only using a small portion, so too our world is revealing itself at low speed. Eyes of the heart are needed to see beyond the plain view. Every tree is alive with spirit. Every rock has a story to tell. Every part of the universe is crawling with energy, calling us to wake up and take it all in. There are certain places where the underworld meets with the sky, places of great Manitou, places between the worlds, places of great magic, all words to say other dimensions are allowed. Let us go to these places and sit and be present. Let us just sit and listen and be. It is enough our running the world ragged these last millennium. It is enough that our resources are spent, our people are tired, and our children are confused. It is with humility we come before the universe and ask, what can we do now to be in a better place? 
How can we be in better balance with the unseen? Can we tune in to the crushing energies underneath us in time to hear of their warning? Thank you. I'm going to read to you uh, three short poems. Um, this is from, these two, first two are from my little illustrated book, which you're welcome to ask me about. You can go to my MySpace page, C-A-R-L-A-S-C-H-W-A-R-T-Z, if you're interested. What is to become, no wait, the, sorry. The, I'd like to read you the first one, which is called Heat Snap After Wet. Not beads, not drops. A film of sweat forms on my skin, under my arms, and around my neck as I walk, and the late day sun shines brilliant in my eyes, blinds my squint, unhinges my smile as I soak up the heat and unwind my day. And this, this piece is called How to Find a Four-Leaf Clover. This is how, over and over, to spot in the green grass a four-leaf clover. Look for the foreground, relief beyond back. At the four leaves, an odd one finds you, you see. Once you find one, or one you, you will likely find two, and possibly three. Best is grass, grass not nearly full mown, one, two, or three weeks grown since clover four-leafed is a mutation, and with time on its side, the likelihood is greater. And this last piece, I've been writing a, a lot of villanelles, and this is a silly one, and it's called Otter Romp. Jump and sing and romp all day. Tumble in the garden, wiggle your hip. The sun is shining every which way. Don't feel obli obligated to stay. If you feel the urge to skip, jump and sing and play all day. If you wake up hair all messy, harboring an explosive burp, don't worry. Bubble, bubble up your sunny way. If you have nothing to say, open your sail and let her rip. Jump and sing and soar all day. When you dance upon a ray of the Champs Elysees, here's a tip. The sun from here over there shines the way. Take a swim in the wavy blue bay. Don't forget to try a flip. Jump and sing and play all day. The sun will shine along the way. It's very warm, so I feel I could share the coldest day I feel. And I'm going to try to sing it, because I believe, I mean, I'm not, I write not uh, intention to uh, sing, but I believe every word has a special note on it and tone, so. I've walked to many, many miles early winter morning. So early, the luminous golden moon still hung in the sky along with too many stars beaming and sparkling. I've walked to many, many miles early winter morning when rhododendron leaf curls so tight pointed downward to stay warm. I've walked to many, many miles early winter morning, listening to howling wind, swishing, crackling tree branches, feeling brutal winds. Smell 
rising on my whole long face as if to tear off part of my skin and pressing off my jacket hood. I put walk to many, many miles as only as five o'clock winter morning even in the decade records of zero cold blast that close to old school in Israel, watching my own breath slip through my double-layered wool scarf. I sit on my scarf and frost on my rashes and I brought I've walked to many, many miles Early winter morning The unbearable coldest day for me is When fear creeps and slip into my senses F well, A story about that then petrifies and freezes me inside out. When my mind crowds with self-doubt and fear, too afraid to imagine the warm blazing lay of sunshine to smile it all. Thank you. This is called Crazy Highway. One, two, three. Driving in the rain, singing all the way. I'm gonna make it someday Always on the run Under the gun All I ask is leave me some time for love Oh yes and I'm always on my way It's just so hard to stay
Thank you. Uh, this, uh, this is a good song for this place because it was inspired by a poem by uh, William Thibodeau, who was a feature here a while ago. He's one of the carpenter poets of Jamaica Plain. Called Annie on a Stairs. These old pine stairs were strong and silent when first made. Now footsteps play their serenade on weary boards. They were in bad shape when we bought this place. It was a case of buying only what we could afford. Four walls to keep us from the cold. We were so young, this house so old. Please fix those noisy stairs, she said. Isn't that the work you do? But I grew to love their tune, if truth be told. I am a carpenter, I tap down restless nails to play the music from the stairs in other homes. Sometimes at night I fight those nails within my head, while in my bed my body's raging like a storm. I go from lost to found. When her slippers play their song On pine piano keys, each with a pitch and tone A tune well known, I know that I am not alone When I hear her on the stairs Music fills the air A melody that is the soundtrack for my prayers When I hear Annie on the stairs Annie on the stairs The children came, they grew, they played their own refrain. Not the same as mine or Annie's, but their own. Long after curfew, when I thought I could not hear, it was the stairs that would betray their safe at home. Our children are all, all gone. But their echoes linger on A kind of harmony with Annie on those stairs They need repairs, not the love that carries on When I hear her on the stairs Music fills a melody that is the soundtrack for my prayers when I hear Annie on the stairs. Annie on the stairs. This is called I Got My Mind Made Up. I 
There's desperation in the streets The human soul In agony Broken and praying for relief We are not whole We are not free But I got my mind made up can sing till every soul can breathe I got my mind made up to be a voice for peace I can't comprehend the powers that be inciting anger my mind made up to be a voice for peace to be a voice for love for those who cannot speak till every heart can sing till every soul can breathe I've got my mind made up to be a voice for peace of change like in the hour before the rain will we make love will we make noise will we create will we destroy I got my mind made up can sing till every soul can breathe I've got my mind made up to be a voice for peace I've got my mind made up to be a voice for peace Thank you Good morning. I work with military veterans and sometimes I write about my work. Um, the veteran for whom I wrote this piece loved it so much he kept a framed copy in his living room. Um, the form is a villanelle, uh, which is uh, a uh, form of formal poem, poetry, uh, okay, uh, based on an old European folk dance for those of you who don't know. Unchong, war dance, for John Julius Rogers, born 923-1929, died 923-2009. He brought me chocolates and a flower today. He knows there's no romance, he doesn't pretend, but hopes I'll listen to what he has to say. He knows family and reason are slipping away, his friends have passed on from that war, he contends, then brought me a book and a photograph today. He brags, I was quite a ladies' man back in the day. The photo shows two houseboys alongside his men. He wants me to see what he's trying to say. In our camp, he boasts, there were no feet of clay. We were tough. His brimming eyes give way again. He brought me a card and songs from yesterday. They fought smart, played light, outran the sun's rays, a camaraderie nourished by both boys and the men. He needs me listening to what he must say. Deceived and ambushed, their camp was betrayed. It was allies cut off the boys' heads as the caged men 
watched helpless. He brought me chocolates today. He knows I'll listen to what he needs to say. I'm wearing my um, T-shirt, my finalist uh, T-shirt for being in the haiku contest in Hopkinton. Uh, I just want to let you know that the three lines of haiku that I composed a few weeks ago to send into this first time uh, for me came as a result of listening to a musician, a, a wonderful musician composer, Oswaldo Golochov uh, from Argentina, who talked about the reasons for composing St. Mark's Mass. Um, uh, something that I needed to hear his um, story a little bit and then understand better how for me to celebrate something we call Holy Week. And it had to do with oppression in his um, frame. And then I started realizing, you know, there's many forms of oppression that we all see around us all the time. Now, the peepers, I don't know, I would say they're probably among the oppressed, but they're part of my um, Holy Week springtime reality for so many years. And I felt that I had to write this little three-line haiku. I love it. Um, it's called Peepers. Cold-blooded frogs in marshes, hope in damp darkness, springtime's ancient music. That's my haiku. Thank you. I'd like to do a, a poem. Actually, it was inspired by the song the gentleman did right after the open mic regarding peace. In fact, I call this peace, but keep this in mind. It's something that we tend to forget. Einstein once said that we cannot preach peace and prepare for war. He who unlocked the foundation of matter and energy that was induced to produce the arms for ultimate Armageddon. We cannot preach enlightenment and wrap a girdle of weapons around our planet. This is a principle of metaphysics. As the prophet once said, he who is without knowledge of metaphysics is an ass. <laughs> to excuse the declarations of war under the banner of my God can beat up your God is a confluence of tomfoolery disguising itself as truth. We cannot preach peace and prepare for war. But imagine, if you will, Illumination as improbable as Einstein's uh, rescued from this earthbound girdle of weaponry, a ripple of sunlight, a quintessential discovery that if for one skip of a gap, a half a heart skip within a heartbeat, it freezes our wayward pursuits of knowledge, of happiness, our digressions of money, power, sex, knowledge, and with Einstein's eyes, we look into the interwoven fabric of being, beyond the quagmire of daily living, permitting the thinnest of slivers of sunlight to enter us, this gentle wisp of truth before it is gone. Gone like the tail of a comet, it sprinkles us with the verisimilitude of all that really matters. Peace is the sunlight of all existence. War is the darkness. This is the law of God, truth, and it is simple. We cannot preach peace and prepare for war. Thank you. Well, as spring is emerging and we're seeing the fingers of the perennials come up out of the earth, it makes me think about Earth Day, although every day is Earth Day. So I'd like to sing the song that I wrote called In the Palm of Our Hand. It's about the earth.
rates are soaring, melanoma grows. Freon is the opium of today. We eat gasoline and drink acid rain. This is called, um, this is a song I think it was a late Neil Hopkins, um, I think he might have written this song, it's sort of a Mississippi John Hurt style arrangement, and it's called Take Me Back. Thank you. 
going to do a song now that's on the album that uh, the lovely Mally Smith is doing harmony for on the album and it's a song about my mother um, after she died my dad and I spent a lot of time together and he started hearing telling me stories I had never heard before so I heard this story about a photo I'd never seen before and, and it was interesting after so many years to find some of this stuff out <laughs> she wore a blue dress with the white collar it brought out the darkness of her eyes Young and sweet and eager, trying hard to please She forgot it was to be a surprise Soon to be married, they went driving into town She said, there's an errand I must run He said, sure, no problem, I'll just sit and read the paper And I'll be waiting for you when you're done she caught her reflection in the drugstore window, paused a moment, checked her lipstick for smears, then posed for the camera, lips parted, smiling shyly, a gift for her lover through the years. She wore a blue dress with the white collar. It brought out the darkness of her eyes. Young and sweet and eager, trying hard to please. She forgot it was to be a surprise She opened up the car door, sidled over, squeezed his arm Her deeds still dancing in her eyes Then without thinking she just blurted out her story She forgot it was to be a surprise When champagne's uncorked, those bubbles just start rising How could she express a thing so grand? She blushed when she remembered it was meant to be a secret Till she had that photo in her hand
Sixty years later, she recalls it all with laughter, trying hard to bling back the tears. An empty chair, a present's gone, all that's left's a photograph, a gift for his lover through the years. She wore a blue dress with the white collar. It brought out the darkness of her eyes. particular piece, I had been taking a songwriting course a few years ago, and one of the things that we did was a little um, exercise where our instructor gave us a, 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 a sort of a vignette of a, a situation and a whole bunch of roles that she passed out in the vignette. Was, the, the situation was something about a you know, fishing boat and, a, and a, a research vessel. And the roles were, you know, the captain of the fishing boat, the, the cabin boy, the, the, the captain of the research vessel, the, um, and, and, and one of the roles, which I thought was very cool, was a dolphin swimming underneath both boats. Um, and the, ex the songwriting exercise was to write a verse or a chorus from the point of view of uh, the, the person or creature uh, the, whose, whose role you had drawn out of a hat. And on the way home, I was thinking about the fact that this is something that kids do all the time. Hey, you know, let's play cowboys and Indians. You be the cowboy, I'll be the Indian. Or, you know, let's play house. You be the mommy, I'll be the daddy. Um, and, and it's just something that kids do naturally. And I just sort of started thinking about, when did we lose that? And this sort of fell out of that. To you, it's just a stick. To me, it's Excalibur slicing through the air above my head, symbol that chivalry's not dead. But to you, it's just a stick. To you, it's just a box. To me, it's a time machine whisking me away to future days when spaceships will carry us away. But to you, it's just a box. To you, it's just a hole. To me, it's a tunnel down, down toward the hidden treasures trove from Blackbeard's pirate ship and Dead Man's Cove. But to you, it's just a hole. To you, I'm just a child. To me, I'm an astronaut, a fairy queen, a cowgirl on her steed, or whatever role imagination needs. But to you, I'm just a child. To me, you're just a grown-up. To you, you're a worker bee, a cog in someone else's great machine. Work, home, and car are all you've ever seen. But to me, to me. <laughs> It took me 38 years to write this song. It's called Appalachian. <clears throat> I have made my mistakes. I have done my share. I have broken many hearts and some beyond repair. And I have held with such disdain, burden and shame, the truth that your blood runs through my veins. I have told tortured myself and made you to blame. I have wondered many times if you ever feel the same. It is just a name. Yeah. It does not mean that we're the same. children of my own I will show them love that you have never shown I 
have finally come to terms that you will never return. But in my heart, I take joy in being the father you never were. Yet in my dreams, you hold me tight in your arms. I always feel safe and you never wave goodbye. And for that, I don't know which of me I hate the most. The me that breaks all oh, the me that holds. This is exceptionally new. Played it out the other night. Not on this guitar. I wrote it on my other guitar. It was after graduation. Spring was on the breeze. Got a case of wanderlust headed out across the sea. Rail pass and guitar in hand, I set out to explore Beauty of a foreign land, gentle curves of distant shore And I still remember, Liza was her name It was mid-September, in the south of Spain and I still remember how she said my name Making love among the heather in the pouring rain T'was the latter days of summer at a guest house on a hill A captivating lover, I dream about her still Flowing hair and deep brown eyes, heart with love to spare. Sculpture of suntan thighs, embracing cool night air. And I still remember, Liza was her name. It was mid-September, in the south of Spain. And I still remember how she said my name, 
making love among the heather in the pouring rain. Many years have come and gone, many loves along the way. Twas my fate to move along another town another day. The open road another mile, yet I dream about her still. Miss the curves of her smile and that guest house on the hill. So many miles, so many nights, so many smiles, none of them right. I strum this guitar, write songs to play, wonder where you are, wish I had stayed. And I still remember, Liza was her name. It was mid-September in the south of Spain And I still remember how she said my name Making love among the heather in the pouring rain In the south of Spain My husband and I raised a combined family of seven children in a five-year age span, and they all had to have a garden plot. This song is called Digging in the Dirt, and I start with the chorus. So if you pick it up, please sing along. for watching this special presentation of unaired segments from Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. I hope you enjoyed them as much as I, and I look forward to bringing you more episodes of our series featuring poetry, music, and spoken word. 
I'm Cheryl Peralt, and on behalf of all the artists and crew who make this program possible, thank you for your interest in Wake Up to Smell the Poetry, and enjoy the day. Stop. 